you see the problem? How about now? Let me give you a hint. This is a mini ITX motherboard, but if we peek under the hood, making it a really big version of a Rockchip 3588 SBC. But size has advantages. There's room to have all the I.O. on one side, and yes, it comes with a backplate. You also get an ATX power connector, 4-pin Molex, PoE support, 32 gigabytes of eMMC, front panel USB 2, real-time clock, and two Gen 3x2 M.2 holes. And that's exciting for storage enthusiasts. Pop in two SATA adapters, and you have yourself a 12-drive weight. There's an E-key, make that a 13-drive NAS. But there's a wee problem. The SD slot is right about here, making software installation fantastically inconvenient. And a PC case, an unbridled nightmare fuel when rack-mounted. What we need is a way to install generic Linux images with one of these. And that's where EDK2 comes in. It's UEFI firmware for ARM that supports booting from USB. But there's a catch. HDMI output requires kernel 615 or newer, but that just sounds like a good excuse to download some cutting edge Linux distros and try them out. Now in a perfect world, I could write EDK2 to an SD card and boot from that, but the Rock 5 ITX is special. So we need to flash the EDK2 firmware to SPI, download army penguins, see what boots and see what installs. This is gonna be fun. Let's get to it. Our story begins on the Rasta Rock 5 ITX page. I'm going to download a copy of Armbian 25, write the image to a micro SD card, and slide it into the Rock 5 ITX Plus. Eventually. Time to power through the initial Armbian setup, and there's my favorite polygonally challenged penguin. Time to get a browser open and head to the download section at the EDK2 RK3588 GitHub page. From here, I can download the Rock 5 ITX UEFI release to the downloads folder, and I'm going to open the image file with GNOME Disk. Yeah, the Rock 5 ITX exposes the SPI flash as a standard 17 megabyte block device, so after a bit of a wait, we're done. Almost. Because if you have anything installed on the eMMC, you'll need to wipe that out. Time to cross our pinky toes and power off the system. Make sure the HDMI noodle is plugged in on the left and apply the electrons. Would you look at that? We got a device manager, Rockchip config, and ACPI options. Here you can set it to device tree, ACPI, or both. Options for mainline and vendor kernels, DTB overlays, and firmware fix-ups. But what I'm here for is this, the boot manager. It's how I'm going to install Linux on a flash drive on ARM, hopefully. I'm back from the Linux store with copies of Fedora, Armbian, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, and Manjaro ARM. Armbian and OpenSUSE have ARM builds, but their kernels are too old, and Timu Arch only works with an eight-year-old netbook. That leaves us with Fedora Rawhide, wait for it, and Ubuntu 2510 daily. So let's start with Fedora. Out of the gate, Fedora is a bit fussy. It only wants to boot in device tree, and even then, the HDMI output nopes while booting the installer, requiring a reboot, and after a bit of Linuxy bits, we get a desktop. The installer sees eMMC and NVMe. Let's go for the NVMe install, and after a bit, there we go. Time for a reboot, and look at it go. This might work. Work might be overselling it, since we're supposed to have a setup screen here and the desktop is unresponsive. Hey, task failed successfully. I'm going to complete the setup and we're at a desktop. Hardware acceleration is working. Let's see what kernel we're working with. 617. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and update the system and give it a reboot and just see if that smooths things out. Back from the reboot, time to peek at the system details. All the important bits are here. Network is detected and connected. Display has plenty of available resolutions and sound. Well, audio doesn't work on Linux, so what were you expecting? We do have a couple of power modes and sleep settings. All right, Ubuntu time. So it's time to see how Ubuntu behaves when I switch the config table to both. 
and give that a save and a reset, pop over to the boot manager and select the flash drive. All right, let's go. And it looks like it's ooh bootin'. I thought that was funny. And Mr. Spinny came to a grinding halt. Well, that's a 50-50. But we won the coin flip and got ourselves a desktop installer. Neat. The installer sees EMMC and NVMe. That's good. Let's finish the setup and let the installer do its thing. All right, time for a reboot. So far, this has been pretty normal, including the first boot taking forever. We got a welcome screen, disable the tracking, and desktop pulse tells me hardware acceleration is working. And we can confirm that by checking the system details. Mali G610, nice. Plenty of display resolutions to play with. Sound has input and output. Network is detected and connected. And it's time to update the system and see if it survives a reboot. No problems there. I wonder if Vulcan's working. Well now, look at that. And Ubuntu 2510 might be a keeper. As long as you don't mind GNOME shell crashing when shutting down the system. While we're waiting to see if this does anything, consider giving this video a like. I'd appreciate it, and it genuinely helps the channel. Do it. Hey, there it goes. I also grabbed a copy of NetBSD Daily, and it booted right up. Now, I didn't bother trying to install it, but it did pick up the Ether Noodles, so you could probably get up to something. This has been an interesting look into the future, and I do say future since Collabra is hard at work adding support for the Rockship 3588, and they are doing it with great vengeance and furious anger. By this time next year, I wouldn't be surprised if everything just works-ish. Then you can just run whatever. But right now, if you want to play Quake 3 using Vulkan, run Steam, watch 4K YouTube videos, or build a hardware-accelerated Jellyfin server, install Armbian. It does all of it, just don't drop the SD card. And if you're looking for the coolest mini ITX rock chipboard on the market, click the link down in the video description and be sure to check out the full write-up over at Interfacing Linux where I cover things in exhaustive detail. All right, thanks for watching, but that's gonna do it for this one. So I want you to get out there and make something awesome.